pray about that. I'm so thankful for Sister Gloria playing the piano. Yeah. yeah. She does so well, we've doubled her salary the last year. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Lord is good. God bless you folks for being here, you visitors. I hope that I hope that my enjoying church and enjoying our people has not been detrimental to you to be able to worship the Lord here in our services. Um, I'm just telling you. This world's a mess. This world's wicked. I'm glad that I'm saved. But I've often said, says to Brother Kerry, I think, I've often said that the church is the Christian support group. And I'm just telling you, when I come to church, you folks help me. The Lord uses you to help me. And so uh, if you say, well, why is it going to cut up the money? Because I am happier and enjoy this group of people in this auditorium better than any place I can think Amen. of in this world Amen. other than my own home. Yeah. Sometimes, well. <laughs> I hope you pick that up. I hope you pick that up. And, uh, you know, I want to take a stand to the book. I want to take a stand on living life and all that. But Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples because you're able to write and divide the word of truth. That's not what he said. And uh, you know what? If you're able to write and divide the word of truth and people can't tell you love the brethren, then you're, they're not much to you. Amen. 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 You know which book is the right book? There's only one book. Amen. I tell people, when I say the word Bible, I want you to understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Those other things aren't Bibles as far as I'm concerned. Right, right. You may hear me mess up and refer to them as a such and such Bible. I don't believe they're Bibles at all. Amen. Amen. But, uh, but God wants to uh, save people, Bible-believing people. He said that all men would know that we are the Lord's disciples if we love one another. I think Amen. that ought to be true. Amen. I'd like to ask you to take, a, take your Bible, and before you stand up uh, in reverence for the Scripture reading, I'd like to try to find a place in the Old Testament. Would you take your Bibles, please, and turn in the Old Testament to the book of 1 Kings. Book of 1 Kings. Now, in my Bible, we're going to be at chapter 22, page 908. But my Bible has more pages than the average Bible does because I need more pages to keep me straight. Now, the reason why I have more pages is my print is so big in my Bible that it makes more pages. Can I get a witness? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Get, get, the older you get, the more you appreciate the big print Bible. I'm not kidding. My wife, actually, at one time, she had a Bible that, was it seven volumes? It, yes. It's, 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 yes. Five Old Testament, two New Testament. She had a Bible one time, hardback Bible, I think it was, and it was seven volumes. Yeah. Why? Because the print was so big. Yeah. And uh, they split it up into seven hardbound uh, volumes. Yeah. You look at me like that, you'll get one day. <laughs> you look at me looking over my glasses. You'll get one day where you'll appreciate big print. Then you'll be wearing reader glasses with big print. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to give you time to find First Kings 22. If you have 1 Kings 22, would you stand with me, please, in reverence to the reading of the Scripture? Somebody says, oh, I love to go to church, because when I, I go to church, I just feel so good. I, I feel good, too, but I don't walk by feeling. I walk by faith. Faith in the Lord, faith in His Word. And you ought not to look for feeling as a result. Yeah, right. Feeling should be just a bypass or secondary uh, result of you believing God yeah. and obeying God. Right. And if you're saved, I hope that when you do come to church like this, you do feel good after it's 
country's over. Amen. But I'm more interested in you and me leaving here better off than when we came in. That's right. Rather than just feeling better That's right. That's right. than when we came in. You'll get what I'm talking about in this message as I emphasize that now. 1 Kings 22, which you follow along silently as I begin reading in verse 1. Where the Bible says that they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth and Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people my horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And they all had a great big grin that they've gotten by watching television and learn how the preachers are supposed to smile when they say that. Yeah. And Jehoshaphat said, come on, is there nobody that's got a sense of humor about Joel Osteen? <laughs> <laughs> and Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? It's like Jehoshaphat had a little bit of doubt even though that all of these hundreds of preachers were in agreement. Yeah. The king of Israel said, this is Ahab, and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man, Brother O'Neill at Glenwood, yeah. <laughs> there is yet one man, Micah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, I mean, said, let not the king say so. Yeah. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten here hither Micaiah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on the throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Kaniah, Kanana, made him horns of iron. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, with these thou shalt push the Syrians until they have consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. The messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. Have any of you ever visited this church and said to you, why can't your preacher be like the other preacher? Right. You know what I'm talking about? And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. Amen. We're going to pause there, but there's a real blessed and interesting story. It's scripture, it's true in the remainder of this, but for time's sake, would you please just look up at verse 8 for the text. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Will you pray with me? Dear Father, I pray for you to have mercy upon this congregation. Dear Lord, I pray that in our joy of the Lord, I pray that no one in this church or no visitor ever comes to a church service would be encouraged to take you lightly. May the Spirit of God drive home into our hearts the reality of you and of 
not only what you've done for us on the cross of Calvary for salvation, but of our responsibility toward you and your word in the South. Do a work in our hearts, we pray, as we try to submit ourselves unto you. Work by your spirit is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Won't you be seated? If I can have your attention for the next little while, please, I'd appreciate it. If you really have to leave the building, go to the restroom or something, do it. But if you're able, I hope that you'll give me your attention. You may leave right when your person next to you on a pew needs to hear the next sentence the most. You may leave when you need to hear the next sentence the most. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, was shopping for a preacher to predict that God would bless him and give him a victory in the coming battle against the Syrians. 400 prophets united in telling him that he would win the battle. That's encouraging, isn't it? But for some reason, the king must have had some doubts about this great uh, unanimity of these prophets. The fact that every one of them agreed. It's a shoe in. You're going to win. No problem. But he said, you reckon there's somebody else? Is there not one preacher somewhere that maybe we might ought to ask? Listen, don't you think if you had 400 counselors that gave you counsel before you made a big decision, you'd feel pretty safe about it? But the king didn't, apparently. And he said, is there another? Ahab, the king of Israel, said, yeah, there's one guy. He calls himself a Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist. Amen. 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 Lives on the west side of Jacksonville, says it's the best side. Amen. That's right. That's right. He said, I hate him. <laughs> don't matter what he's preaching about yeah. every time I go over there he preaches against what I'm doing yeah. Amen. he said I hate him I ain't going to ask him <laughs> and uh, Jehoshaphat says don't talk like that yeah. in the ORV anybody got the copy of the ORV only a revised version Amen. here's what he really said he said you know what I paid my kid a compliment one, one time? You know what he said to me when I, when I paid him a compliment? He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. What was the use of me saying that no man can do these miracles which thou doest except God be with him? Yeah. He goes and insults me and says, I need to be born again. <laughs> Another time I asked this prophet, if, if he would pray for me to make me rich. Yeah. And he came back and said, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen. Why do you have to do that? <laughs> when my prophets tried to discuss the Bible with him, he shouted at them, saying, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, yeah. how can you escape the damnation of hell? Yeah. So he kind of had a bad attitude toward him this particular prophet. Yep. Amen. Of all the prophets in the kingdom, Micaiah was the one that he avoided yeah. the most. See, Ahab wasn't really wanting to get better when he went to the prophet. Okay. He just wanted to feel better Amen. Exactly after right. listening to the prophet. Yeah. The title of the message is a question. Do you want to get better? Or do you just want to feel better? Amen. Amen. Do you want to get better or just feel better? I saw a man in the hospital with some serious health problems, but he was bragging on his surgeon. Yeah. And he said that this doctor is not all that chatty and he's not all that friendly. But he told me, preacher, he leveled with me and told me the truth Amen. from the beginning. Amen. And he said, you know what? I appreciate that. That's, right. That's rad. 
I was talking to a man, a patient, that wanted to get better, mm -hmm. not just feel better. Amen. Many people today want to go to church that makes them feel better. Yeah. Amen. They say, I don't want to go to church where I feel bad. Yeah. I don't know if you can tell, but I don't feel bad. <laughs> you said, yeah, because you're going to holler. <laughs> you know what Billy Sunday used to say when, when people told him when Billy would preach against liquor and all the liquor manufacturers and stuff and the masons and one thing or the other that was going on in town, he'd name them. Somebody say, Billy, you're rubbing the fur the wrong way. And Billy Sunday said, well, if you turn the cat around, <laughs> it'll lie down just right. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Come on, you bunch of kittens. Yeah. What do you want? Yeah. I hope you want to get that. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to give you a few things. Now, you're listening to an MD. Yeah. Right. You are. I'm not taking anything away, Brother Taylor, over here. Amen. But I've been an MD longer than he's been anything. Because <laughs> yeah. I was born as Michael Dayton. So yeah. that's what you're getting. Okay. And this MD that's called to God to preach will tell you, number one, if you want to get better, you're going to have to see your need. Amen. Right. You're not going to get better if you don't recognize what's wrong. Right. Amen. As long as you think you're okay, you're not going to ever get any better that's if you're in a pass right. and don't realize it yeah. or won't admit it. Yeah. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 17, the Lord said to the church at Laodicea, because thou sayest I am rich. Yeah. Where are they? Not in God's sight. Right. Because thou sayest I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched yeah. and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Yeah. Church was in trouble because they wouldn't see their need. Right. They said, we don't need anything. So the doctor asked you, How's your pain on a scale of 1 to 10? Yeah. Now, if you don't want to ever see that doctor again, you'll get gone, you say, no, maybe a zero today. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a one yesterday. And you don't tell him that many hours out of the day, I'm up somewhere around eight. Yeah. <laughs> How's your pain? Well, preacher, when I get convicted, I'll join. When I get convicted, I'll get saved. When I get convicted, I'll quit this. When I get convicted, I'll dedicate myself. Yeah. Yeah. The fact is, you've already been convicted. Amen. 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 Some of you got convicted just as soon as you stepped on the scale going to the doctor's office. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You, skipped, you stepped on the scale, and everybody in the doctor's office wanted to see what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. You know what's going on? You've been convicted. You just won't, won't, don't want to admit it. Yeah. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all know that there just ain't enough clothes you can take off the scale and get what you want out of it. That's right. <laughs> Wait a minute, I got on this, and I, I got my purse, I got all this stuff. You can put all that down, it's still going to say, whoa, what is the time, please? <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> <coughs> Somebody else says, oh, I thought that was a powerful message. Somebody else gets saved. Somebody else says, praise God. What a blessing to be in a body living church. Amen. Someone else walks out. Oh, wow. yeah. Unhappy, yeah. miserable, finding fault with a deacon, finding fault with a choir. Yeah. How can you find fault with a choir that's got Sydney in it? That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Find fault with the preacher, find fault with everything. And the fact is, your problem is you won't admit what stepped up on that scale. That's right. That's right. Thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Yep. Amen. How is your power? Yep. I mean, some people, it's a major undertaking for them, claiming to be saved. It's a major undertaking for them to show up 
one Sunday a month. That's right. One service. Yeah. I mean, they really got to work and psych themselves up to get there one time right. out of the month. You know what that's a sign of? Yeah. You better get an EKG. You got heart problems. Amen. 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 You got lung problems. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit for those of you who know your Bible. Amen. You got all kinds of problems and you just don't admit it. You don't, you're not aware. Right. You got to see your need. Yep. Some of you have no idea what it means to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How's your perception? Come on, you know what it's like to go into one of those places and, and you say, well, when are you going to put the sign up? Where's those letters? <laughs> yeah. No, I, don't, I can't read the top line. I don't see any lines. So they wheel it in to you where you can see it a little bit better. Yeah. You know some people about as blind as a bat coming to a Bible-believing church. That's right. yeah. Amen. They have no perception. <laughs> now, if you're saved, you've got the ability. Yeah. But you know what? Some of you don't read your Bibles once a week. That's right. right. So I'm you're being mean. <laughs> well, I've been here nearly eight years. It's about time we got here. Anyway. That's right. Amen. That's right. Say, you being, you being mean. I'm trying to tell you that if you're going to get better, you got to quit worrying about feeling better Amen. and admit the fact you're blind as a bat. Yep. Amen. That's right. I don't care if those glasses make you look old. If you need them, you need them. Amen. Go ahead and get them. In order to get better, you're going to see me. Yep. In order to get better, you're going to have to seek a doctor. Yep. You know why people go to hell? Because yep. they won't come to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't think they need it. They may have a mama that's saved, may have a grandmother that's saved, may have a brother or sister that's saved, but that's, that's women's religion. I don't need that. Right. Yeah. That's right. Jesus said, if you will not come to me, yeah. that you might have life. John 5, 4. Right. I don't know about you, but I thank God for Dr. Jesus. Amen. 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 Luke was the beloved physician, but Jesus is the great physician. Amen. 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 Somebody said, I always feel self-conscious that, that our doctor in the house is going to take everything personal. He won't. But you know what? You feel a little bit bad if they don't emphasize that part about how long they've been practicing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because you kind of want to just leave that out. Don't use the word practice. I don't want you to practice on me. That's right. Amen. Practice on somebody else. Right. I want you to be experienced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't tell me how long you practice. Tell me you're a doctor of 20 years experience. Amen. I'm glad Dr. Jesus has been around. Amen. I'm glad, you know, come on, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody tells, the doctor tells you, well, well, you need to have this done. Yeah. Is there anybody that's ever had the nerve to ask him, how many times have you done this? Yeah, that's right. If I got to have this done, is this your first time? I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does that not bother you? Yeah. You know, say, well, what we got to do is, is we got to take your lower left leg and transplant it to make it to the lower right leg. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it's a real tricky operation. I want to ask him, have you ever done this before? How do, your, how do your patients walk after that you do this? <laughs> Have you got any videos of how they walk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after, after you did this surgery on them. That's right. I'm glad. I'm glad that Jesus has experience Amen. in your problem. Amen. And he's fixed lots of people with your problems. You may seem unique on your block or, or among your relatives, but don't you know there's a lot of people got the same problem you got? That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. It's a sin problem. Yeah. And Jesus can fix it. Amen. He sees it. Yeah. He's sincere and he's straightforward. He's not going to yeah. say, well, let's take this leg off and, and if it don't work, we'll grab the other one. <laughs> 
Remember? You know that old thing. Take two pills and come see me in a week. Yeah. That kind of thing. He doesn't have to do that. There's nobody who come to Jesus rightly and did what he said. They would be disappointed. Amen. Third, if you want to get better, not just feel better, you feel like you're at the doctor's office right now. If you want to get better, not just feel better, you're going to have to submit to an examination. That's right. Some of us military guys, we know what that means. Yep. Amen. Amen. But you got to do it if you're going to get the results. You know what the psalmist said? He said, search me, O God. Amen. Know my heart. That's right. Try me and know my thoughts. Amen. You know how God does that today? Mm -hmm. One of the ways he does it is through preaching. Mm -hmm. Amen. And a preacher who preaches the infallible word of God. Amen. And God examines you. Eight years ago, I came and had the joy of preaching at this church for the first time. When someone preaches, if some of you may not be Baptist, but when somebody preaches and the church is looking for a preacher and they're thinking about asking him to be their preacher and he's thinking about what to do if they were to ask him to uh, be their preacher, oftentimes that's referred to as Preaching in view of a call. Yeah. <coughs> Anybody ever heard that? Preaching in view of a call. That's right. A bunch of other Baptists called it, he preached a trial sermon. <laughs> yeah. You ever heard that? The preacher came and preached a trial sermon. Amen. Well, here's the truth. Mm -hmm. If a preacher's God called and he's preaching a sermon... Everybody listening to it is the ones being tried, right. not the preacher. Right. Saying, well, I wonder if, if he'll preach like that every Sunday. Yeah. I wonder if he'll get any better. Yeah. Well, I wonder if he'll get any worse. Yeah. Oh, that would be really bad. But the fact is, God uses preaching, and it puts you under the spotlight of the Word of God. Amen. Right. And I really don't believe that a preacher ought to use a pulpit to go after one person. That's right. Amen. Right. Now, I may use the pulpit to expose somebody, primarily outside the congregation. But, uh, but if there's anybody that makes it personal, it's the Lord. Amen. Amen. It ought to be the Holy Spirit. Yep. Amen. Folks, this is His. This is the Holy Spirit's scalpel. Amen. 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 This is what the Holy Spirit does when you got a problem. That's right. Some of y'all been cut on, haven't you? Aren't you glad Amen. that they use something really sharp? Yeah. Wouldn't you rather, if they're going to cut in you, they didn't get out a butter knife? Yeah. By the way, that's what the Living Bible is. It's a butter knife. Amen. The New International Version is a plastic knife. Amen. Amen. The English Standard Version is a rubber knife. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that the Lord's got a sharp instrument. Amen. Amen. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intent Amen. of the heart. Amen. Jim Lovelito one time heard a message in our church preached by, and I may have these names wrong, but I believe it's him, her message, preached by Gerald Fielder, an evangelist friend of mine. And after the service, Brother Jim's trying to be spiritual. Yeah. Real difficult for Jim. <laughs> He's a great guy. He's a great preacher. Been at his church in Tallahassee, Florida, 34 years. Yeah. Amen. Pastor Fernwood Baptist Church. But I remember when he was in my church listening to Gerald Fielder, after, after Brother Fielder was done, he said to him, Brother Fielder, you stepped all over my toes. Amen. And Brother Fielder said to him, he said, well, I sure did miss because I was aiming way up above there. Yeah. Amen. 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 He says, I just won't get to your heart. Amen. 
Folks, that's the Holy Spirit does that. Yes, it makes you uncomfortable. Amen. But being uncomfortable is on the way to getting well. Amen. Let me say in closing that if you want to get well, if you want to get better instead of just feel better, you need to stick to what the doctor tells you to do. Amen. And just take his prescription. Amen. And if the preacher laughs a little bit when he's preaching a hard message and you've been squirming and all that, all I can say is I'll try to remind you of an old an old musical that I heard when I was a little kid where the woman sang out, a little bit of sugar makes the medicine go down. <laughs> yeah. Makes the medicine go down, makes the medicine go down. But you better take it. Yeah. And if my joke is not enough for you to be able to swallow that, it's your loss. Yes, your loss. You say, I don't care how much sense of humor he's got. That's, that's too much. I can't do that. Yeah. Oh, yes, you can. Yes. And if you'll take it, you'll get better. Yeah. You've got to take it. Yeah. If you just listen to it and examine it and leave and say, I like that preacher. Mm -hmm. I don't believe what he believes, but he sure does. Yeah. I like to hear him say what he believes, even if I don't believe it. Yeah. I'm telling you, you're going to leave like that. Here's what you are. James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the word, Amen. and Amen. not hearers only, Amen. deceiving your own selves. Yep. My friend, when you come here, don't try to endure and run. <laughs> don't quit. I'm never coming again. Don't pretend. Realize you've been at the doctor's office. Jesus is the real physician, Amen. not the preacher. Endure the pain, engage in whatever practice he prescribes, take the pill, Amen. and enjoy the progress. Amen. It could be one of these days you'll be way on up there in years, yep. and you're still well. Amen. That could be true spiritually, too. Let's stand together, heads bowed. Amen.